Uh, good afternoon. Please be seated. Uh, I would like to invite the chair of our next session, Professor Amir Globazon from Tel Aviv University. Please welcome him. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone, and welcome to this session of the Research uh, Symposium. Our first speaker will be Yoav Goldberg from Bar Ilan University and uh, AI2, and he will talk about the missing elements in NLP. Hello, hi, uh, thanks for being here. Uh, being here. I'm Yoav um, from Bar Ilan and AI2. I'll be talking about one of uh, the missing elements of NLP, uh, and I'm sorry in advance, it's not really going to be a research talk, but a planned research talk, uh, what we should be working about, uh, I think. Um, so, so a few words about me. So I have two affiliations. One of them is academic, uh, professor at bar -Ilan, uh, and the other is more applied. Um, I'm a British director uh, at AI2, which is uh, Israel, which is a non-profit organization, which is... Uh, uh, developing NLP for the common good. Uh, so tools that people can actually use. And my, my research agenda, there is an echo here. You also hear it or only me? Sounds very annoying. Anyhow, um, so my agenda is basically to try and figure out what is risk, uh, missing in, in NLP today and how to uh, bring useful NLP technology to the hands of uh, non-expert data scientists. Okay, people who are not NLP experts. Uh, and also, um, as a, the other strand is to try to understand better uh, what deep learning models for NLP actually do, because they work pretty well, but we have no idea why or how. So to summarize what NLP is for me in a nutshell, uh, it's a system which is semi-smart that takes uh, human language's input and produces some non-trivial uh, useful output, uh, maybe trying to convince some user uh, or some human that some process uh, of um, intelligence was involved in this. And if you kind of think of uh, how we do uh, NLP, uh, so we uh, progress from uh, rule-based systems, basically kind of uh, written patterns over the text, to uh, corpus-based statistics, where we kind of counted stuff uh, to more uh, uh, traditional machine learning, and recently, uh, deep learning. And if we uh, plot this thing uh, on a graph, you can see that basically the people who, who create NLP systems, um, there was this trade-off. So usually you needed to have a lot of uh, linguistic expertise, um, and this kind of uh, went down, but on the other hand, now you need to have a lot of uh, machine learning expertise, right? So you need to be an expert anywhere on this curve, uh, just uh, depending kind of experts in what, right? So it has to do with language, now uh, it's more uh, learning. Uh, and if you look uh, at this, uh, there is uh, also um, more to this uh, x-axis. Uh, it's also about uh, transparency. So we uh, became much less transparent. Now the uh, models are black box. So they used to be transparent, maybe complex, but at least you kind of knew what's going on. And uh, the other issue is now we need a lot of data, right? So uh, uh, when you uh, just wrote patterns, you had no need for data. Uh, statistics you can compute over small corpora. Uh, now, with uh, uh, deep learning, we really need a, a lot of data to, to get into work. And if you kind of think how NLP should be uh, done, uh, in my view, so I would like to be over there where the person who builds uh, NLP systems do not need uh, to have any expertise in linguistics or machine learning, and, that the, and the systems are transparent, and they actually require uh, little data uh, to work with. Um, now, this sounds like uh, a dream, because it's really kind of uh, hard to achieve, um, but uh, I think it's uh, achievable, um, and notice that like, there, is data, there is expertise in this, but in the uh, person who built these systems. So the person uh, who is using NLP as a tool should be able to kind of uh, encapsulate this knowledge and use it without knowing it. Okay, just kind of uh, use good tools. Uh, and I think the one way to achieve this is basically to combine uh, both rule-based and, uh, and deep learning systems. Basically, a human uh, writing rules or uh, giving declarative knowledge 
um, and aided by machine learning. So basically, a better split of human and machine uh, interaction. And in the rest of this uh, talk, I will uh, briefly describe uh, how this can uh, look like, but I will also say that uh, we are hiring both in AI2 and academia. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in kind of uh, this uh, human-machine combination kind of thing, uh, or uh, more of uh, even UI work to how to enable better NLP, uh, let's talk, I'll be happy to uh, hear. Uh, but let's talk about NLP today. So we are doing deep learning, uh, or like neural networks, uh, and basically things look like that. Uh, that that's an LSTM cell. Uh, and if you um, listen to uh, Chris Manning, uh, that was two years ago, uh, he said that uh, basically in NLP today, what you need to do is uh, uh, throw some bias at the task with some attention, and this will work very, very well. And uh, things have not changed much since uh, besides this. So now we only focus on attention without the uh, bias TM. And we have all of these uh, models, uh, Elmo, Bert, Grover, transformer models, uh, and so on. Uh, and they actually uh, work uh, pretty well. So the trend is basically you do end-to-end -end everything, okay? Uh, and with uh, big data, these things actually learn uh, pretty well and we get uh, pretty amazing results. And if we have pre-training, then we are also okay with uh, medium-sized data, uh, assuming that we can pay for the compute because these things are pretty expensive uh, to run, these, uh, these uh, very large models. Uh, so that's how NLP today uh, looks like, but that's how actually the academic uh, NLP uh, looks like. And by academic, I also include uh, some groups uh, within uh, Google or Microsoft or, or uh, Facebook, but also other groups uh, are not using those things. Uh, so how does applied NLP in industry uh, look like today? Well, uh, there are NGRAMs and TFIDF and LDA still. Um, and uh, there is work to fake that, that people are using, and LSTMs uh, kind of uh, are getting in, and like uh, uh, first is a nice model. And then uh, Spacey, a very nice library. Uh, this library uh, does uh, a lot of things, sentence boundaries, lemmas, lot of speech, entities, uh, dependency trees. Uh, actually, people don't use uh, the smart stuff, usually. I think uh, uh, most users don't use the fancy trees or, 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 or part of speech. They use lemmas and entities, basically, which is a very basic processing. Uh, and then uh, there is, okay, Elmo, Bear, GPT Time are now uh, getting uh, some uh, momentum, but pretty much everywhere you see regular expressions uh, if you look uh, under the hood in many of the systems, uh, even within the kind of companies that actually do use a lot of uh, um, uh, deep learning models for NLP and do it very well, they also have kind of um, around them or before them or after them a lot of uh, handwritten uh, rules. So basically, we are over there. Uh, so, um, and we are over there, we didn't advance much, and we also do it with the same technology that we did it like uh, 20, 30 years ago. So basically, uh, the, the same things. Um, and now you can ask why. Like, why are we still uh, using rule-based systems for, uh, for uh, applied NLP? And now we can kind of look at this uh, picture again and realize there is something wrong uh, with it. Uh, so, okay, you, you take language as input and you have some output, uh, but there is also a user uh, in this picture, uh, and this user has some intent that uh, they want to get out of the language or they kind of want uh, help uh, from a user to, to, to do a task. Uh, and actually, you, you need the processing to basically be according to what the uh, user wants. And uh, academic NLP failed to provide good way to specify what the user actually wants. Uh, and the user can be basically a developer who wants to kind of create a new system using NLP tools. Right? And he needs to tell the system what to do, what he wants to kind of uh, look after. Uh, and that's currently uh, really missing. So if you look at uh, 20 years of uh, NLP research, we had great progress on uh, low-level text and science tasks like uh, morphology and syntax and like semantic role, text and semantics, discourse, reference, many, many tasks that we, are, we now can do uh, pretty well. Um, and then on the other side, uh, on the kind of uh, deep learning side of things, uh, we do uh, a lot of uh, feature learning, presentation learning, RNN, transformers, and we have word vectors and concept vectors and extensionalized embeddings and so on, and they're very useful as well. Um, but uh, the kind of uh, minor, but the kind of uh, smaller tasks are very, uh, are very remarkable, but they're also not useful for non-experts. If you want to use parse trees, you need to know what they are and they're hard to use. Uh, on the other side, um, 
these uh, kind of uh, deep learning models are very, very good uh, at learning uh, integrate patterns, but they are very bad with nuance. They contain biases, and they are very, very hard to actually control uh, if they make a mistake. Uh, and uh, this bias part uh, is very important. There is a talk uh, by uh, Hila Gonen, who is over there, I think, uh, and she will, she, she will be talking uh, about a bias aspect later today. Uh, but uh, in this task, I will not talk about bias. Uh, my kind of uh, key takeaway here is like, okay, so we had symbolic NLP, then we moved to uh, deep learning, okay? Uh, but uh, actually, NLP is larger than that, and it, it should uh, contain both, and we should find some way to kind of uh, connect this puzzle and somehow include both symbolic knowledge and uh, the more uh, uh, kind of uh, fluid, uh, feature-learned, vector-based mo um, models. Okay, uh, and that's basically uh, my research today, how to effectively combine deep learning and symbolic NLP together uh, with the uh, current focus on uh, information that kind of uh, look for knowledge. Okay, so um, I said that uh, there is a user in the loop, so what does this user actually uh, wants to do? And now I'll describe a non-expert user, or an expert in something but not in NLP. Uh, who wants to do something uh, with text, and I've met many of these uh, in academia, but uh, there are also uh, people uh, in, in industry that wants that. And what they want, basically, uh, is to take some text and turn it into a table of facts that are in the text. Um, and so, uh, for example, uh, someone from uh, biology wants to read biology papers and extract which genes bind to, uh, to uh, which other proteins. So, for example, reading this abstract, uh, noticing uh, these kind of uh, uh, fragments there and filling a table in which uh, A20 gene uh, binds to uh, these proteins uh, from the text. Uh, and later, uh, he can use this uh, kind of uh, uh, table to do his own research. Okay, so he actually cares about the table. He, he, uh, there is no table, there is text. Now he uh, puts a kind of uh, postdoc to read text and summarize it. It will be nice to have some system, but there is no system. Uh, and all of these uh, people want basically uh, the same thing, but with a different domain. So like uh, different text and different outputs. Okay, but essentially a very similar task. And, uh, and this task is called IE, information extraction, how to extract uh, information from text. And it's a major research area uh, in, in, uh, in NLP today. And the way it's done basically is like that. So uh, these are uh, just a sample um, of, um, of papers. Basically each one of them uh, is uh, uh, doing um, a, a, a project on its own with some expert in the loop. And this is very not scalable. Uh, so we, we cannot really do IE today, or we can do it if you, can, uh, uh, if you have enough training data and you have a, a good team of experts and a year for a project. So this is really not what we want. So the question is, how do we enable anyone with some information need to create high quality IE systems without needing to know CS or linguistics or NLP? So sort of like uh, SQL for text. So you kind of, as a, so you learn some uh, simple language and then you can uh, 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 query text effectively. Um, so why is it hard? So basically the person uh, has some uh, intent in mind, okay, gene binds to protein. Uh, and uh, there is a gap between what he has in mind and, and how it's expressed in language. Right? Because language is very messy. Uh, and of course, the uh, solution is to annotate text and, and learn from it. Right? That's the uh, BERT solution or the uh, uh, deep learning solution. But then you can ask, okay, but uh, how much do I need to annotate and, uh, and how accurate will the results be? And the answer is a lot and not very, okay? uh, or not enough. Um, so let's take a closer look uh, at this gap. And what we see is basically we have uh, two kinds of information. There is uh, uh, knowledge about language and how language behaves. And there is also knowledge about the domain, which tells me that uh, binding and close proximity and cross links are the basically same thing. Okay, uh, and the, the expert knows about the, 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 the domain. They don't know much about language. And the issue is that uh, all the, uh, uh, the uh, techniques we have today tightly couple uh, these two things, these two, these two uh, types of knowledge. Okay, so if you have uh, rule-based uh, rule systems, the user expresses intent through low-level patterns, uh, capturing both domain and language diversity together. So it's high precision, but uh, it's low recall, uh, and it requires expertise. You need to know what you're doing about language. 
Okay, so it's very effective when we know the rules, but the expert does not know the rules of language enough uh, to, to actually formulate them. On the other hand, uh, on machine uh, or deep learning, uh, learning, the computer infers the intent from the annotations and will have predictions, okay, uh, covering both language structure and domain knowledge. So it's high recall, but it's uh, low precision and it's a black box. And you, and you need some expert in the loop, and you need a lot of examples for it to actually learn all of this uh, language knowledge. Okay, so it's uh, very effective when we don't know the, the rules, but the expert actually knows a lot of the domain rules. Uh, so what I'm proposing basically is to uh, combine these again and let the expert uh, declaratively uh, give you some rules and somehow combine them uh, with machine learning, uh, maybe aided by, uh, by machine learning. Okay, so the vision is basically uh, the user will uh, specify domain knowledge via declarative patterns. Uh, some um, NLP layer will handle all, all of the complexity, of course, with a lot of uh, uh, deep learning and so on under the, the hood. And then some uh, collaborative human machine process uh, will help the, the user uh, uh, evolve uh, even further. So basically using machine learning to amplify human performance. Um, so let me kind of uh, uh, very quickly uh, go through the uh, components. So you have some, uh, so currently we have all of these uh, uh, distinct NLP uh, components. The idea is to basically uh, combine them into something which is more uh, useful uh, for users. And now we can uh, translate the text into this representation, which we have to define. Uh, this, is, this is still uh, not good enough because uh, it's hard to kind of uh, uh, work with this, but we can also uh, compile the intent to this, uh, to this uh, uh, same language and then do some extraction. Now this will uh, give you uh, some working solution. User specifies some high level pattern uh, with some uh, engine get, uh, get extractions and then you can have uh, more patterns and, and more extractions. Uh, but uh, they may have forget something, right? Uh, uh, recall is a, a, a very serious uh, issue here, and uh, here we can have an AI assistant that uses machine learning and NLP that will help the user see uh, if something is missing, and that's basically a new learning setup where you scan patterns and text, infer what the, what the, uh, what the user tried to do, and try to offer uh, basically uh, extensions uh, to his knowledge. So for example, here I can, uh, as a, a, a cartoon, uh, give him uh, more uh, like possible uh, uh, expressions, then he can uh, select uh, some and do this in this uh, iterative process. So the user provides domain knowledge, uh, some NLP layer and a rule engine will handle the complexity, uh, AI assistant will infer user intents uh, and look for weak spots, and then a collaborative aspect will help both of them uh, improve uh, the system, uh, and that's a framework which I hope anyone can use to create effective AI application Leverage, uh, leveraging set of the art NLP. Um, so that was basically uh, my talk, one missing element in NLP today, interactive uh, uh, process of development uh, that, that goes beyond uh, one shot uh, model. So you uh, have a model, it fails, then what? You need to be able to specify uh, what's wrong and get uh, improvements. And we'll do it with uh, collaboration. Uh, and here is something that we kind of uh, uh, started working on. It's really work in progress and not working. Uh, it's work basically of uh, uh, Mika and, and Hillel at uh, AI2. Uh, lots of engineering, but also a lot of science. That's an IDE for basically uh, NLP model development. Uh, I will not go into the details, but you can see uh, on the top that uh, there are patterns written in some uh, simple language, and then they are compiled into something which is uh, much more elaborate that you don't need to know, and then uh, you get extraction. This is work in progress. Uh, it's coming at some point. I'm not even saying when. Uh, one year, two years, who knows? Uh, but uh, uh, we, we will release demos around the way of like uh, 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 cool things. And to, con to con conclude, a language is hard. We made a lot of progress, but all the tools that we develop are good for experts. How can we remove the, the expert from the loop? I would say better interactions, better abstractions, uh, different ways to learn, and uh, ways to uh, incorporate in, in the loop some uh, declarative uh, knowledge. Uh, if you're doing UI work, uh, or like you want to do uh, uh, UX work around this, please talk to me. I'm looking for experts uh, in that. Uh, and uh, thank you, and these are also kind of uh, related research projects that we are working on in this space. I will take questions now.
the, the, the question was how to convert text to numbers. Uh, I would say that we already know how to do it with deep learning uh, now. The real issue is how to help people talk to these numbers. Uh, so people talk in symbols, they, they don't talk in, in numbers, and you need to bridge this gap. So uh, the real question is how to have the kind of right uh, abstraction that we let a user specify intents uh, in uh, symbols, in language, and have it match uh, in a good way what the kind of uh, uh, DL learning uh, models learned. So it's not really an answer, but a view. <laughs> 